Okay, so here we are a day before Valentine's Day, and I have three guys. <laughs> One has sent a Valentine because he's home with a sinus infection. The second is cooking me a Valentine dinner tomorrow. And the third I'm taking out on Wednesday because his birthday was yesterday, but I was at a Super Bowl party. So the course is in week five. I'm really looking forward to helping these gals get on the website and meet some great guys. It's all about finding our potential Mr. Adorable, right? So mwah, if you don't have a Valentine, let's make that happen for next year. You guys take care. Guys, it never ceases to amaze me how women in their 40s have more matches and options than men in their 20s with tons of things going on for them. This is why I feel zero sympathy for women in their 30s who are crying, where have all the good men gone? Because you've had throughout your life hundreds upon hundreds of guys interested in you. You've passed on Prince Charming dozens of times. You've made the wrong decisions over and over again. So don't come crying when you hit the wall and no one is taking you seriously. You literally live on easy mode and you have all the options at your feet. If you have court coming up with your ex, I have a few pointers. Number one, realize that you're not going to sleep the night before. So maybe get a sleep gummy or some sleep oils to help you sleep. Number two, you're not going to feel like eating. So bring some snacks like some crackers, something light for your stomach, some peppermints to keep your stomach uh, calm and your breath smelling good. Bring an empty water bottle and some tissues and pictures of your children to stare at. So you stay focused on what's important for that day. The other thing is, is the week before or a couple weeks before, go to the courthouse. Get a lay of the land. Know where you're parking, know how long it takes to walk in through security, know what floor you're going to, know where your courtroom is, know where the bathrooms are, and also pay attention to where the bathrooms are on different floors because you don't want to be shitting yourself on the same floor that you might bump into the opposing counsel's attorney. Also figure out where you're going to be meeting your attorney at, in the courtroom, outside of the courtroom, or at their courthouse and walking over ahead of time with them together. Role play in your head. What will you say if your ex speaks to you before court? Role play that. What if you're on the elevator together? Role play that. It always scares the crap out of me to see women on TikTok planning for divorce or for, or for court, planning meticulously like some psychopaths. No need for all the planning, madam. The government and the court are on your side. You are at the winning side in this contract called marriage. When I say that you don't need a reason to break up with somebody, I want you to remember every single time that you have been broken up with by a guy and you know, and I mean, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. You're sitting there reading through every single text message again, calling your friends, summoning a tribunal and being like, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? You didn't do anything. You see, men are better at this than us. When they don't see it with us, they will ghost us. As we see in a Jamaica, them turning a duppy, them turning duppy one time. And then gone left we, and we know that we didn't do anything. If you're not Jamaican, duppy is the word that we use for ghost. They ghost you. So when you're not seeing it with them, don't create a fight. Don't pick a fight. Don't make a scene. Don't. It doesn't have to be dramatic for you to exit. If you're not seeing it and you're not feeling it, please leave that man. The same way he would leave you if he didn't see it with you. And if you've been broken up with, you ain't do nothing wrong, sis. These leftovers really mix serious relationships with Chad, using them for fun. If you go and ask her how many actual relationships uh, she's had, you're going to find out most of her interactions with men have been situationships. No one is leaving you if you were not in a relationship in the first place. Alright? Men are not ghosting you, they are walking away after they've had their fun. Them leaving was always part of the plan. It's, it's on you for not being smart enough to play around that. Women like these are like a driver who doesn't read the signs and crashes 16 times but still blames the road somehow for his misfortune. So once again, if you're new here, I've been married and divorced three times. And I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that I've been through so you don't have to go through it, girl, okay? So today I'm going to give you three things that you need to know about your partner before you walk down the aisle. Number one, how they resolve conflict. Do they deflect? Do they blame? Do they gaslight? Do they argue with straw man's arguments? These are things that are important to know because if they cannot argue effectively, then you guys are never gonna solve any issues in your relationship. Number two, their attachment style. If you Guys, notice how she has been divorced three times, yet she's explaining, you know, 
warning women about men, implying that men were the reason why she got divorced three times, and not that she is poor at selecting and doesn't know how to keep a man. You can't make this crap up. If you don't know the different attachment styles, please Google them. Mismatched attachment styles is why you have that push and pull dynamic in your relationships, and it can literally kill a good relationship. This is where one partner has a tendency to run and the other partner has a tendency to cling. And now you got this cat and mouse game, this power struggle in your relationship and it kills your sex life, your trust and everything. Gentlemen, this is my personal view. So feel free to disagree in the comments. But in my opinion, it's women who are the ones that run and men who are the ones to chase. They do not cling like this woman said. They chase. When an argument escalates, it's usually women who want to give up or who stop trying to fix the problem, who decide it's over or who pull away and wait for men to do the heavy lifting. It's men who chase, who try to be problem fixers, who say things like, don't worry, everything will be alright, we will manage, etc. It's the way nature wants it, the same way men are the ones who chase women trying to date them, while women just sit on their butts and wait. It's not a cat and mouse dynamic, it's not an attachment style, it's male and female behavior. How often have you guys seen a woman following a man around saying, don't worry, I will change, I will do this and you will feel better, just stay, we will manage. How many times have you seen women actively trying to fix the problem and make the men stay and how many times have you witnessed this the other way around? Women want problem fixers. If men are not good at it, women won't stay for long. If a man behaves like a woman does when a problem arises, you will have two people sitting and waiting for the other person to make a move. But let me know what you guys think. And number three, how they get along and the dynamics of their family. And this is a big one because do not wait until you're married to figure out how they interact with their family, how their mom treats their dad, how their dad treats their mom, how the siblings are treating each other, all that good stuff. You need to know this. Trust me on this one. You need to know how their mom and dad interacted and how you... <laughs> She's really trying to blame her failed marriages, all three of them, on dynamics and bullcrap. A century ago, you had families who went through depressions, poverty, terrible illnesses and countless problems, but they stayed together. Nowadays, you have women breaking marriages because of the dynamics and whatever crap, because the spark is gone. Why do men need to put up with that? Why would men risk so much to marry a woman who will probably leave you because you've had a bad month and the glitter wore off? I'm going through my first little bit of heartbreak post-divorce and I want to share it with you guys. I use that word loosely because it's not like it was a serious relationship or anything, but it's definitely the first person that I've gone on consistent dates with that I feel like I could have seen a future with that I was shut down for. I was pretty much seeing this guy for two months. We talked on the phone. Imagine call, uh, calling a two-month situationship a serious relationship. The state of affairs right now. Every single night, basically, since the day we met, we talked about future plans. We talked about traveling together. We talked about future dates where he straight up said, yeah, we're going to go on these dates. Like, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. After our second date, he literally talked about Googling um, what relationships were like between our two Enneagrams and compatibility. He told me how him and his best friend talked about how we would have tall kids together. And we went on weekly date nights. So clearly all of this combined to me thinking that, hey, this is going to move towards a relationship. Well, when I finally brought the conversation up and actually I told him, hey, I think you should be deleting Tinder. Um, we were not on the same page at all. He was unsure that he even wanted to be in a relationship um, and definitely unsure about wanting to be in one with me. Whereas I, on the other hand, was ready to say like, hey, I'm not dating anyone else. I had been asked out on some dates and I had said no because I was giving this guy loyalty who I had no reason to be giving him loyalty to. Gentlemen, how easy it is to play these all for widows. They strive so much for that guy who is clearly out of their league. This woman could have had many guys, many men interested in something serious with her, but she ditches them and wants Chad, the guy who clearly won't commit. He just told her a few sweet stories and she's already there, like taking candy from a baby. And at the end of this day, this really fucking sucked and it hurt, but I'm trying to remind myself that I would rather open my heart and like be open and tr be willing to let myself be hurt than to let myself close down and push all of this love away and not even try. 
definitely some lessons to learn here. Um, I will not be jumping into something without having that conversation or like assuming people's feelings moving forward. So many people on the internet can relate about why it feels so much harder to get over like a very short situationship versus um, get over a long-term relationship, right? Because you had a lot of potential and hope there still. But today, going to focus on Valentine's Day, focus on filling up myself and realizing that, hey, there's going to be someone out there that is going to put the same energy that I want. It's a little too late to be opening your heart for the right guys because they have better options than already divorced 30-year-old woman. 200,000 units are ready with a million more well on the way. But gentlemen, that will be it for today. Thank you for watching. Leave me your thoughts in the comments and I will see you next time.